Hello everyone, Cliff here. This is episode 61. I wanted to talk to you about, there was a documentary that I watched on Hulu that was called Batman and Bill. And I have to admit, I have a thing for comic book characters. I've liked comic book characters all my life. Captain America has always been my favorite. So obviously when this popped up on the screen and it said Batman and Bill, I was like, I wonder what this is about. So I started watching it. And the story behind Batman and Bill, it's actually a documentary, a very interesting one, is that uh, Bob Kane gets credit for creating Batman. And over the years, he has made a truckload of cash from DC for the, for the Batman franchise. And every time that they make a movie or comic books or whatever it is, uh, Bob Kane and his families get royalties from that. But what the documentary explored is the fact that that Batman was not just the sole creation of Bob Kane. There was another gentleman by the name of Bill Finger. And Bill Finger actually died penniless. He died broke uh, in a rundown apartment in New York City. And going back through the notes and through the interviews throughout the years, people would periodically ask Bob Kane, what you know what about this bill finger bill finger says that he helped you create batman and and the batman that we know and bob kane would say always dismiss it you know oh he was just you know some person that was on the team or something else like that but there was actually one interview as bob kane uh, was getting older where he actually gave credit for the design of the batman the one that we all know today uh but uh, Bill Finger actually came up with the design of Batman, the original Batman figure that they came up with. You know, the comic books rejected because they were like, no, he looks too scary. Kids won't like him. But uh, the design that we know today of Batman uh, was actually, you know, Bill Finger did that. He admitted this in an interview, but it really didn't go anywhere. And, you know, meanwhile, as you can imagine, they're having all these conventions, comic book conventions that were going on. And they're talking about making like the first uh, Batman movie. Uh, back in 1989 and releasing that and, and drumming up uh, drumming up uh, interest in that. But what's interesting is with, with these comic book characters, right? The whole reason why you read these things is, is because, you know, the, the good guys are always trying to do the right thing, you know? And sometimes they, you know, I have to like, you know, bend the rules a little bit to do it. And that's what makes them interesting characters. You know, they challenge their morals and their ethics or whatnot. Uh, but during these conventions, Every now and then, someone would actually stand up and ask the heads of you know DC Comics and the Batman creators, they're like, what about Bill Finger? When is he going to start getting credit for this? And periodically, you know, the, and of course they never had an answer. They never, you know, they kind of would like step or tiptoe around it or whatever it is. But you would think that the same people who were writing the stories for, you know, Batman and for all these people would actually like step up and, and do the right thing. If it was, you know, if Bill Finger really did have something to do with the creation of Batman, he should get recognition for it. He really should uh, receive, you know, some kind of a compensation for it because all those years, you know, he didn't. And uh, it finally came to a head where like more and more people started catching on and you get the internet out there and there was this like, uh, there was like this group of people out there that were kind of pushing for Bill Finger to also get credit for it. So that's why, you know, if you if you watch all the Batman movies throughout uh, that have been released, like, you know, through 89 and, and, and all those other Batman movies, is that it's not until uh, Batman v Superman, if you watch the opening credits of that movie, it'll actually say Batman created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger. And Warner Brothers on their own reached out to Bill's, Bill Finger's family and they've worked with, you know, trying to uh, get some measure of compensation, some kind of royalty for Bill Finger. So they actually started to do the right thing. It only took a lot of prodding from people to actually do it, you know. And I was watching that documentary and it, you know, it kind of, you know, it was interesting that the fans were more or less calling bullshit, you know, on the comic book creators because, you know, they were they were always espousing to do the right thing, but yet they themselves were not doing it. And then finally they did step up to the plate and do it. And it, it kind of reminded me of uh, back in my high school days when I was a teenager, um, I was really surprised that my mom and dad gave me a lot of leeway uh, when it came to uh, going out with my friends and I had a car and they would all the time, I would say, hey, could I go out here or to go out there? And I had a curfew of 11 o'clock. And I remember on more than one occasion, I blew past that curfew. I always did. And sometimes it was like if I was on a date with a girl or if I was hanging out with my friends, but sometimes I would not get home until midnight or 1230, which was way past my curfew. And, you know, and when I would get home, mom would be so upset with me. Every single time that I came home, I always had some excuse. 
uh, as to why. I would like literally like sit in a car and dream something up, right? Like, uh, oh, I couldn't get the car started or, uh, you know, I, I had to change the tire or, you know, something. It was always, oh, I had to get this person home or whatever it was. There was no cell phones back then, so I didn't have to worry about calling or something. But, you know, every time that I would come home, my mom would be like, you know, your curfew is 11 o'clock. You said you would abide by that curfew. You haven't done it. And, you know, it, it didn't happen all the time, but, you know, maybe like once a month or once every few weeks, it would happen. And it was becoming a regular thing, which was really sad. And I remember the last time that it happened, uh, I got home. It was almost one o'clock in the morning and I walked through the door expecting my mom to be screaming at me. Uh, and yelling at me and telling me that I was grounded and all this other stuff. But surprisingly enough, when I walked through the door, uh, there was nothing. And I was surprised. The lights weren't turned on. I didn't hear any yelling. I didn't hear anything. So I was kind of like, okay, maybe she slept. You know, maybe she was like sound asleep or whatever it was. So I slid my shoes off and I tried to be as quiet as possible. But when I came around the corner, there she was walking up the stairs. And she didn't say anything. She didn't say anything to me. And at that point, I felt super guilty because I, I had told her that a condition of me having a car, of me having this freedom, was the fact that you know I would abide by the rules and I would be in by 11 o'clock at night. And just the sheer fact that she didn't say anything reminded me of that fact that you know she was just basically just without saying a word, she called me out, you know. And it was just really disappointing. And from that point forward. Uh, whenever I even thought there might be something where I would be late, I would I would always ask first. And if my parents said, you know, no, then I was home at, you know, 1050 or 1055. But I was never late after that, uh, just basically because my mom really was expecting me to step up and do the right thing. And if I pledged to do this, then it's my word. It's my bond to actually go out and do it. So. Anyways, uh, you know, and I'm glad that she did that because the truth be told, you know, it was a bad habit. I shouldn't have been doing it anyways, but, you know, just by her calling me out and, and just doing this, you know, set me on a path to say, you know what, if you're, if you say you're going to do these things, Cliff, uh, you need to do them. You need to carry them out. Even if it's inconvenient for you, you need, you need to do the right thing and live up to your word. So anyways, I just wanted to share that little story with you. Uh, I hope you guys have a, a phenomenal Wednesday. Uh, I almost forgot what day of the week it was. Anyways, uh, I will see you guys tomorrow.